Hey, welcome to True Beginner. It's the series where an experienced woodworker, that's him, shows an inexperienced woodworker, that's me, how to do stuff in the shop. Should we take that again? Uh, no, it was good. So if you haven't seen this series before, Nate is my editor. He is responsible for all the cuts, the special effects, and the text you see on screen. And I'm super happy to have him here because he is a great editor. And uh, today's kind of an important day for us. This is the first time we've been in the same room together since COVID broke out. We've been social distancing. So Nate, how was your, uh, how was your COVID year? I actually caught COVID. Oh, uh, how was that? It wasn't too bad. I didn't I didn't get a really nasty case of it, and I actually had a great time while I was in quarantine. <laughs> like many people in America. Well, we're, we're glad you're healthy, and we're glad you're back. Today, we're going to be sawing. Specifically, we're going to be cross-cutting, which is taking board like this and cutting a piece off to make it shorter. Isn't all cutting cross-cutting? Oh, okay, uh, good point. Uh, so most people are most familiar with cross-cutting because maybe you've seen uh, carpenters building houses and they've got two by fours and they cut them to make them shorter and then they put them in the structure. That's not the only way you can cut. The other cut is called a rip cut. And uh, a rip cut is when you're cutting down this way and you're making a wide board narrower. Why are we only doing cross-cutting? Oh, uh, because uh, there's so much to know about sawing. There's so many mechanics. There's the way you're holding it and holding the work and so many basics that if we did all the mechanics and cross-cutting and ripping, the video would be too long. Okay, then what do we need to cross-cut? Oh, so, um, so we just basically need a saw. Uh, so here is a, a, a pretty good one. It's made by the Baco company and you can just order these online. They're about 30 bucks. Um, and it's, it's good for the type of work that we're doing today. Will it also do ripping if we needed to? Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, there, there are two different kinds of saws. I probably should have explained that before. Um, there's, a, there's a rip saw, which is for cutting between the fibers like this. And there's a cross cut saw, what we're doing today. Cross cut saw cuts across the fibers. They're different because they have different teeth. The cross cut saw has needle shaped teeth for severing those fibers as it cuts through them. The rip saw has more chisel shaped teeth and they're for chipping out little bits of wood as they go between the fibers. This saw is sold as having a hybrid cut and the manufacturer says it will do both. And the manufacturer is lying. It is not good for both. Uh, the hybrid cut is basically a cross cut that'll rip like okay, uh, not very well. You can do both cuts with this saw. And unlike most commercial saws, this one is resharpenable. So in a future video, we will just resharpen this for rip cutting and then we'll have both saws. Good, uh, what else do we need? Um, so besides the saw, we're just going to need a square so that we can draw lines and we're also going to need a pencil. You can use a big thick carpenter's pencil or any other kind, doesn't make a big difference. Let's go draw our line and we can talk about that. So before we do any actual cutting, we need to make some lines on our piece. So let's assume I just wanted to take a little piece off of this, so like about that much. So I'll put a little tick mark right there. And then to draw my line, I'm gonna take my square, just an inexpensive speed square, these are a couple bucks online. It's got a lip here. And I'll put that lip against the edge of my board that keeps it perpendicular. I'm gonna slide it up to that little tick mark I just made and then strike a couple of lines nice and dark across there so that they're good and visible. And I also want a line coming down this edge of it where I can see it. So I'm gonna take the square like this, I'm gonna put that lip on the face, move it up to the line that I just drew, and then draw a perpendicular line down that edge facing me. But why do you do two lines? Oh, uh, so you really need two lines. The first line is to make sure that you're straight this way It'd be really easy to have the saw go this way or that way. And then as you're sawing, you need to keep the saw straight up and down. We call that plumb. Okay. And this line that's facing us gives us a reference for that. When you're doing your saw cutting freehand, you have to have reference lines in order for things to be straight. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. Yeah. I also noticed that you're using a clamp like this on the table rather than the a leg vise. Uh, Nate, Nate it's, a, it's a bench. A bench. bench. On the bench. Don't, don't call it a table. Um, yeah, so I usually would use the vise for my cross cutting, but then if you don't want to cut into your bench, you usually tilt the work a little bit so the saw doesn't cut all the way through. And learning how to cross cut while also tilting, that's a lot. 
Um, if you're just starting out, I recommend just clamping it flat like this to your bench, um, and that'll make it a lot easier to learn the basics. Before we actually make our cut, we just have to talk about the line really quickly. In any cut, you've got the wood that you're going to keep and the wood that you're going to get rid of. The wood you're going to get rid of is called the waste, and I usually put an X there to remind me what the waste is. You have to think about the line and where you're going to cut. Anytime you're making a saw cut, you can see the saw actually removes a little bit of wood. Um, that's called the kerf, and the kerf makes the wood a little bit shorter. So you have to think about where that ends up. If we cut right on our line, or if we cut on the left-hand side of it, we might make this piece too short. So when you're doing a rough cut, you almost always keep your saw in the waist, and that's on the right-hand side of your line. Now, if you're very confident in your sawing skills and you want to use the piece right off the saw, then you'll cut right on the pencil line, and that's called splitting the line. It's a slightly more advanced technique, so for this first cut, I'm going to demonstrate cutting in the waist. Okay, so a cross cut like this happens basically in four stages, and I just came up with my own little list for them. And those are the trench, the kerf, the corner, and the waist. Uh, Nate, could you put that list up on screen? Ah, excellent. So, what we're going to do is we want to make the cut, but if we just put the saw on the wood and push, it's very hard to start and it skips around. We can't start the saw confidently that way. So we're going to start by making a little trench, and that's easy. You're going to take your other hand and put it on the wood, and I use the knuckle of my thumb to guide my saw. I just put the saw against that knuckle and move it back and forth until I'm right next to my line, just in my waist. And then I pull back. Once, and then usually twice. And now I have a little trench at the end of this piece of wood that's going to keep my saw right where I want it to be. Now I'm going to do the kerf. I'm going to take that trench and I'm going to extend it back all the way along this line on the face. So I'm just going to slowly track backwards, bringing the saw down and blowing the sawdust out of the way as much as I need to to keep seeing my line. And that looks like this. So now I have a kerf that goes all the way across the piece of wood, and the saw always wants to follow the path of least resistance. So that kerf has made this piece of wood just a little bit thinner all along that front face. As I continue to saw, that kerf is going to guide the saw and keep it on track. Now we're at part three, which is what I call the corner, and what I'm going to do is start dropping my saw so that I'm cutting along this line and along that perpendicular line at the same time. Tracking along both lines gives me a much squarer cut. I'm going to keep going until I get all the way to the bottom of this line. So now I have a really good straight cross cut started, and I'm going to just progress through by just pushing forward with my saw in nice, steady, even strokes. Now I'm getting to the end. This is the part that I call the waste. If I just power through, this scrap of wood is going to break out and leave an ugly splinter. So as I'm getting to the end, I can hear the sound of the saw changing, and as it changes, I'm going to reach over and grab my piece of scrap and support it. That's going to keep the wood from splintering too badly. And there we go. I got a tiny splinter, but you can see that my cut is really clean and really square. So, that's my demonstration. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Okay, now we're ready for Nate to do it. Okay, Nate, can you attest that we did not practice this off camera? I absolutely can. And have you ever, do you ever do this before? 
Not this well. <laughs> <laughs> did you do it like in shop class or something? Uh, I did it in my dad's garage as a kid. Okay, so it's been a few years. Uh, quite a few, yeah. All right, so what's your first step? All right, first, um, sort of lining myself up, getting ready to make the, was it a notch or a? a trench. Trench. It doesn't matter, either yeah. one. So I'm going to uh, set up, get the knuckle of my thumb to get my blade in place, and I'm going to go in the waist. So you're going to be on the right side of your line. Yeah. And now what are you going to do? Now I'm going to pull back. I'll do it once more. It sort of looks to me like you're pushing down on the saw. Okay. I don't know. Uh, and what you want to do is just let the weight of the saw do the work. Really just be drawing backwards and not trying to push it into the wood. Got it. And then when you go to actually make your cuts, you just want to be pushing forward, not down at all. Yep. That'll make your saw wiggle. Okay. All right, so now uh, that I've made the trench, I'm going to go to make the kerf. Okay, time out. So what you're doing is you have a lot of angle on that and you're cutting a lot into this edge before you've established your kerf. Okay. What you want is a much shallower cut and you want to think about drawing that line back. Mm. And it should be kind of all the same depth in yep. the wood. Okay. So, and then blow out that sawdust as much as you need to, even while you're sawing so you can see it. So Got go ahead it. and keep going. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's about right. So you've got a really good kerf right here. It's going the entire uh, width of the piece of wood and it's, it's right on the line. That's actually really impressive for a first try. What are you going to do now? Now I do the corner, which is where I'm going to bring the saw slowly angled this way. Yep. And you're just going to try and connect this point yeah. to this point underneath. So you're kind of doing a triangle of wood. Okay. Uh, don't try to saw through the whole thing. Just connect those two points together. Yeah. Okay, let's time out again real quick. Yeah. So a couple of things. One thing is that you need, I should have covered this before. Um, let me grab the saw really quickly. What you need is your saw can't be coming into your body very much. Yeah. It needs to swing pretty free, kind of like this. Okay. So your elbow should be able to swing back really freely. And now Nate already got this, but you guys couldn't see. He's holding with a pistol grip, so his index finger is extended that really locks your wrist in place. If you just stick your index finger out and try to move your wrist back and forth, you can feel how much stiffer it makes it. So he already had that down, probably from hand planning. Yeah. It becomes natural after you've done it a little bit. And then, um, so what you want to do is let that arm swing. And he's already got this too, but I'm just going to explain it. He's got a good wide stance. His rear leg is back and his front leg is right here and he's gripping the work. That's like a triangle stance. The one thing that you want to work on is right now you're just working in the middle of the blade mm -hmm. and that makes the middle go dull much more quickly. You want to use as much of the blade as you can. And this is a weakness in my own technique. I often focus too much on the middle. So it's something everybody has to work on. So first try to get it so that your elbow can swing smoothly and that it's, your body's not in the way. Hopefully I'm not in the way either. I'll try to be more over here. Yeah. And then that's great. And then remember you're just pushing forward, not pushing down at all. Okay. There. So that looks pretty good. It looks pretty square. The line close to us is nice and even. So now you've done a nice triangle of wood. You just have to cut out the rest. Now what I usually do is focus more on the far side, so I lift the saw a little bit. Okay. You put the saw in the kerf, and then you lift it a little bit. We'll angle it down a bit more. Keep going, keep going. See, now your whole oh, yeah. saw is in the kerf, mm. so it's being guided. It can't go off in any direction, yeah. but you can focus more on the toe of the saw, and that's going to bring you through more of your waist. Go ahead. Am I getting... You're pretty, getting pretty close. Pretty yeah. Keep going. Time out. Let's see if we can make this first cut perfect. Yeah. 
pretty soon you're going to start to feel the cut get easier yes and that tone is going to change as it does that reach around and grab your piece of waste and that's when you want to be really easy with the saw cut like just pushing it gently feeling those individual fibers snapping under the saw and that's going to let you just lift off that waste really cleanly okay that it's mostly clean, yeah. It's, it's really good. That's really nice. We have a square over here. <clears throat> and let's test. There we go. That is a really square cross cut. And that's your first try ever yeah. doing it. Thank you. <laughs> Not bad. I think we should set up and do a couple more of these and you should practice. Yeah. Cool. surface That's much better look at that yeah now I do most of my actual cross cutting in the vise and if you want to do a cross cut in the vise not have to reposition the wood and not hit the bench you're probably gonna have the wood up at an angle like this so I set it up like this for Nate and now he's gonna make the cut uh, Nate what do you think about this how does it feel getting ready for this I'm a little concerned about actually hitting the bench itself but ultimately I don't feel too intimidated in making the cut. Oh, well, we'll see how that goes, Hotshot. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's see. Don't power through the end. Don't power through the end. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> It's not a big deal. I was just trying to remind you to go gentle at the end so you don't break out. So, how's it look? Looks pretty good. Honestly, I have to admit it, it, it does look pretty good. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the way that looks. And I didn't think you'd do a good job, but you did. So, nice work. <laughs> Thank you. So today, we've done almost all of our sawing up at the English joiner's bench. And a high bench like this is fine for sawing, but it's not ideal because you're standing up and you can't engage the biggest muscles in your body. My favorite way to saw is actually on a low saw bench like this one. This is very easy and inexpensive to build. Uh, we'll have a video about this next month, so we'll show you how to build it. But I want to show you how this can improve your sawing. I have a nice wide bore here and I've already struck a line across the end. And if I want to cross cut this, what I'll do is just lay it here right off the end of my sawing bench. And what's great about this is I don't need any hold fasts or clamps or anything. I'm going to kneel on the board and I'm just going to use my left hand to press it down. So it's going to hold it down to the bench and my thumb is right where I need it to be. Then I'll get my saw and I'll come over here and it's easy to make my trench and I'm ready to start sawing. I have a really great view of my line, and that's great for staying on track, but even if I had a line down the edge of the board, I wouldn't be able to see it from on top like this. So I have to be much more in charge of keeping my saw plumb and getting a straight cut. So let me tear through this, and we'll see how it goes. So that was actually great. I've got some tear out on the back of this board because this is very soft white pine, but the cut is super straight and I can also just tell by eye that it's very square. It went well for me, but I have a fair amount of experience doing this. Let's get Nate over here and see how he does at the low bench. And here's Nate trying this for the first time. It definitely feels, uh, it already kind of feels a bit superior. I feel like even though I haven't done anything yet, I could maybe put more into it. And make sure you get your thumb over there for yeah. when you make the trench. That 
that felt really good. <laughs> was it easier? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a really different thing when you're above the work that way. Yeah, that felt so much better. Okay, Nate, um, I have been sawing for so long that I don't, I don't even know what to say about it anymore. This was you doing it for the first time. What advice would you give people who are learning to crosscut? A lot of my advice would have to do with making the kerf. Uh, I noticed when you were doing your cuts that the kerf you made was a lot deeper. Oh. Which made it, which seemed to make it easier to finish cutting through the piece in general. Okay, so when you're, after you've made the groove mm -hmm. and you're coming across the board for that shallow kerf cut, yeah. I did that more deeply than you did. Mm -hmm. Okay, I completely didn't notice that. So that's obviously one of those things that's just become automatic over years of doing it. Um, so it's good that you noticed that. I wouldn't have even mentioned it. Um, one thing I saw about your sawing is the first couple times you were cross cutting, you had a lot of trouble with the saw jumping out of the kerf. Yeah. What would you say to somebody who is having that problem? Why did that stop after you practiced? So when you're making the kerf, it's easier to get a straight line if you make uh, short cuts. But then once you have it established, if you make nice, confident, long cuts, you're cutting through the wood a lot faster and it's helping you stay in that line. Okay, yeah, so if when you need a lot of control, to make a line straight, like when you're just making that long kerf. That's when short strokes are helpful. Mm -hmm. Once the kerf is done, then you want to use the whole blade, which also helps you to not dull the blade only in the middle. So using the whole tool gets it to wear evenly so it lasts longer in between sharpenings. We sawed uh, off the end of the bench, we sawed in the vise, and we sawed on the low saw bench. Which sawing setup do you like the best? A saw bench. <laughs> you don't have to think about it? Nope. Okay, so why, why was the saw bench better? You just felt so much more in control. Yeah. yeah, getting above the work does seem to help a lot and using those back and shoulder muscles. So, you know, if you have the space for it, having a low bench is really great. Um, the one that I have there is similar to my low Roman bench, but it's a lot smaller, lighter, and uh, cheaper. We'll have a build video on that. It's slated for June. It's already on the schedule, so we're gonna do that. Um, I'm really happy we got to do another True Beginner video. It's been yeah. over a year yeah. since we did one of these, <clears throat> which was not the plan. These videos have always been popular. And uh, now that COVID's over and we're both vaccinated, you can look forward to seeing a lot more of these videos in the future. Also because they're, they're quick to make and they're pretty easy. So yeah. we, really, <laughs> we really like that. Um, but we wouldn't be making videos at all if it wasn't for our fantastic patrons on Patreon. And we give them all kinds of rewards like early access to videos, a fantastic discussion forum, and free access to all of our plans. If you'd like to get in on those deals and be one of the people who make these videos possible, Go on over to rexkruger.com. No! Uh, Patreon.com slash rexkruger. That's the one. <laughs> nice job. I will see you next week for another video. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, was that the rehearsal? That was the rehearsal. Oh, okay. If there's no red dot, yeah. then we're not recording. Okay. <laughs>